What up, dudes? Taking a look here. Peter Fairbanks. He is making some noise this postseason. Getting some attention. Because he throws fuzz. And he does it pretty unusually. Um, in terms of his arm action. We're going to see this arm action here. A lot of people say, well, wait a second. That's, he's short-arming. And that's bad for you. Uh, I want to be clear, the, the definition of short-arming it not really the, the action of your arm as soon as you separate your hands. Short-arm was a term developed to um, look at extension, shoulder extension, and essentially like cutting yourself off, not, not getting full late launch when you threw it. Short-arming it was you're short-arming the ball at release, cutting the ball off and not maximizing your extension. So this isn't short-arming it. At least this is what, what the term short arm was meant to mean. So if you guys have been following me for a while, you know that I'm a super big advocate for an, a very simplistic hand path and arm action. In simplistic terms, just to make as much sense that I possibly can, I kind of tell people that the less checkpoints, essentially, that your your hand gets to, as soon as you break your hands, the less space that your hand has to cover into its slot, the better opportunity that you will have to be consistent in the slot and repeat your hand path into your slot and repeat your release slot. And a lot of throwing a baseball, uh, especially pitching, is about consistency. Now, if you have a a hand path in which you you hand break again this isn't to say wrong or right but if you have a hand path that goes out and then back up here and then now it has to come up here to get to its slot that's a lot of area to cover a lot of space to cover and a lot of things can go wrong based on the tempo might potentially be changing with that lead foot now that's my kind of simplistic way of looking at it and that's why i like a simplified hand path so you can just see he breaks his hands comes down and now he's in this position he's going to in initiate his retraction with his elbow here boom and you kind of have this cool little mechanism here of the hips sinking and the front foot foot whoa and the front foot going down to anchor point and this trunk kind of counter rotating into elevation almost watch see that so the hips sink down and they could be just the angle hips sink down but they drop into their rotation whereas the trunk it's almost going to elevate and then counter rotate check it out boom All right so look at our positioning here boom boom, and then we can see that back foot off at full anchor point. So we have, what do we have, right? We have this rotational energy here, storing, building beautifully, and now you launch and do release. He's kind of like me too. He's got this elbow climb right here. Good external rotation. And I noticed this when I was watching this first, like watch his, his, his path at slot and release and then in line of his deceleration. You're going to see it. Look at this. Now, this is what I was talking about with buying your arm more time to decelerate with trunk flexion and rotation, right? So he won't be able to decelerate his arm as as he does here unless he goes into trunk flexion, starting there, and then completion of trunk rotation, right? So his trunk is rotating, and then his trunk is going into flexion, which is down. And then that's buying his arm more time to decelerate, which ultimately allows for his arm to accelerate here and just gas. 
Um, okay, and then this video here on the left, there's a really cool little move that I noticed when I was first watching it. Watch this back knee. Okay, so as he comes down from his leg lift, that back knee is going to start to crack and almost looks like it's going to collapse forward. But then there's this shift. Boom, right there, right? So it's almost in, into collapse, and then boom, he like corkscrews, right? This rear hip. And then holds that force, right? So this is like, that's the position in which he's storing up that energy system of uh, ground energy. And then boom, you see that? How it's like boom, shift, shift, and then corkscrew, and then... Now we launch, right? So it's another cool angle. You're going to watch this knee almost shoot down. This is that move that we were talking about over here with his hips dropping into rotation and his trunk kind of rotating or elevating. So we're going to see it here on the left. Now watch his hand. Right? So this is that move, man. Velocity enhancer. Oof. So as soon as he's going to drop into that rotation, that drive knee is going to like crack forward. That's when he's initiating that elbow into that retraction. Check it out. Boom. Boom. Right? So watch how much force he's putting in. Boom, to that lead foot. Boom. Watch where his anchor point is. Watch where his hand is. So you anchor down, and right when you anchor down, that hand flips up above the shoulder which delays that trunk. Hips are opening, trunk is closing, and you snap, boom. And then that lead leg, you just gotta stabilize. And then boom, late launch extension. And this is another really cool angle to see this arm deceleration, Whew. right? So this is what I was talking about with the trunk, okay? Trunk rotation completes arm deceleration. Trunk rotation, trunk flexion. Allows for arm deceleration. Cool. Really fun to watch. Um, subscribe to the YouTube if you don't. I don't know what. Love you guys. God bless. Go race. See you.